What's up guys, Aronius here with another Raid Shadow Legends video for the weekend. Uh, happy Father's Day to the fathers out there. Happy Father's Day to my father, you know, great guy, he supports me through everything I've done in life. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the weekend. I'll be going to a barbecue after this to spend some time with my father and my brothers and family and friends. So it's going to be a good one. Uh, I hope you guys had some good polls this weekend. We do have the 10 times event still going for another 13 hours left where you could potentially pull Warlord. Unfortunately, I don't have any other shards. Uh, again, I don't pay for shards, so I'm not going to be pulling any additional shards. Although I could potentially get Biggin or even Roxam. Uh, it's just not what I'm going to be going for. However, today what I'm going to be talking about and what I'm going to be showing you guys is the Doom Tower Normal Floor 100 uh, Magma Dragon, which is level 220. So that's the last Magma Dragon level and boss for Normal, um, the highest up. I don't know if Magma Dragon's ever been at the top. I don't think so. But, um, but yeah, no, I definitely was trialing out some teams and I happened to come across a free-to-play, well, somewhat free-to-play friendly team in my opinion because we do have Tayrell, uh, we do have Seneschal as well. Um, let see if I can show you him. A lot of people don't use this guy or I've, I've heard from a lot of content creators that he's garbage, but I really think he does have some use, especially in Faction Wars. Um, he's decent in dungeons because he's going to be used as a CC champion. He does place this counterattack buff on himself for two turns um, uh, and then has a 50% chance of provoking all enemies. If you book him out, it's a 100% chance. So he actually has a really good A3. He also has an A2 with the perfect veil uh, on, a, on one ally. I wish this was like two or three allies. That would have been sweet. I don't have it booked out. I just booked him till I got the lordly challenge. And then the A1 has a chance to play to a leech, 30% chance, booked out, goes to 40. I don't have him booked all the way out. And then, of course, we do have Umbral Enchantress, who also has the Undying Evil, which provokes enemies, places her on unkillable. And she's one of the reasons why I win this, because she has that unkillable uh, on the Magma Dragon. So the Magma Dragon can be provoked, which is really cool. Now, this is an auto team. It takes about between five and eight minutes so not bad if you want to farm magma dragon on normal overnight or while you're doing whatever you're doing throughout the day um, the next one is mandatory you have to use uh, apothecary unless you have another uh, passive healer and then of course Scylla the drakes you get her after I think 275 days of playing or 200 days something like that um, and then of course Tayrell he has the decrease attack constantly so he's gonna you want to make sure you block out his preemptive strike because as you know dragons cannot be um, you know given a decrease in speed so they, they resist that they're immune to it and then also if you block this out he's just gonna be doing the a1 which decreases the magma dragons attack and then the a2 which does do the decrease defense which is also his heavy hitting ability anyways for the waves and then he has the ally defense in all battles by 25%. So somewhat free to play friendly in my opinion. So without further ado, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and just take it up, take them in and we'll start. And kind of just going through, I'm not even gonna touch it at all. I don't need to. Now I did run this at least two or three times prior to just make sure that it actually is 100% successful. Um, you see that uh, he ended up freezing someone. Uh, I do have, I believe, Seneschal on a freeze uh, set. And then I have uh, Scylla Drakes in a relentless set. So she's constantly um, turn going back and taking more turns because if she takes more turns, she's going to have that passive heal, which is going to continuously heal your, your champions. Um, and then, of course, we need Seneschal and Umbral Enchantress provokes. Uh, in order to stop the Magma Dragon from using his heavy hitting abilities. And then also Apothecary, he's just there for extra heals. I also have him in, not I think Giant Slayer for the Mastery, so he does a little bit more damage on the Magma Dragon if that Mastery procs when he's hitting him. So now we're at the Dragon at only one minute, which isn't so bad. Now you're gonna notice that we're not gonna always land all of our um, 
all of our debuffs, which kind of stinks. But the Provoke debuff, once it lands, the Magma Dragon is forced to use as A1 on that one champion. So because Umbral Enchantress has that, uh, that unkillable, she's not going to get killed. So that's really sweet. And then he attacks her twice. And then once she's done, now Seneschal should come around and use his move, which is the Lordly Challenge. So now you're pretty much not going to die. And then with her taking so many turns, Silva Drakes, she's going to keep on healing. Now, he does die from time to time. And there's a couple times where this will get dicey. And the team looks like you're going to lose. But you end up coming back and you end up winning because Silva Drakes has the Relentless set. If for some reason the Relentless set doesn't proc, then hopefully we've got our Apothecary healing us up and helping us out, making sure that we don't die. So I'm just going to let this play through, and you guys can just sit back, relax, and watch it, and enjoy it, and uh, yeah. Alright guys, so there you have it. Uh, looks like we did get a victory. It took 7 minutes and 42 seconds. My best time was 6 minutes and 48 seconds on auto with this same team. Uh, Magma Dragon, Normal Doom Tower, 4 100, level 220 Dragon. Uh, not a bad run. Obviously, if I had stronger champions or if I upgraded these two champions, maybe got them to rank 6, level 60, got them some more damage gave them War Master, they would hit a little bit more damage, maybe they would reduce the time by about a minute, maybe two minutes tops, um, and yeah, no, and I could also, if I wanted to put Scylla Drakes, I used to have her in a stun set, so if I changed her mastery to War Master instead of the stun set type mastery, uh, this run would be a little bit faster as well. So there you have it guys, I did the Magma Dragon on normal Doom Tower, that's an auto team. Now, I just wanted to show you again real quick the team setup that I had going on. You can also use another champion. So you can also use this guy right here, Ignatius, if you have him. And then you just want to make sure that if you use Ignatius, take off his turn to Ash ability. Um, now, I use him in Spider mostly, but uh, you want his Battle Shout because his Battle Shout ability does have a chance of provoking. Another champion you could potentially use as well is, let me see if I can find him. I forgot his name. Uh, let's see where he is. I only have him at level 50. Here he is. This guy right here, Giscard the Sigild. He has the A1 which attacks an enemy and places a decrease attack for one turn. So if he's really fast, 
he'll potentially keep landing that decrease attack. If you book it out, it'll go to 75%. But right now, I, I use my Tayrell because my Tayrell is booked out further than this guy. And he does have the Provoke right here and then places a shield on himself. So this guy would probably be better to put in uh, against the Magma Dragon than, say, Seneschal because he also has the increased defense and attack on all allies and fills this champion's turn meter whenever they're attacked um, by an enemy under Provoke or an increased attack debuff, so, or increased attack buff, excuse me. And then he has a defense uh, in Faction Crypts as well. So eventually I'll probably end up shifting this guy in place of Seneschal uh, and then see how he does too. But that's another person you can use as well. Or honestly, anybody who has a provoke that has decent defense, HP, can take a hit is who you can slot in to make sure you're uh, getting that Magma Jagan to keep on attacking you. And also, I just wanted to show you guys my champions. I realized I didn't show you the champions themselves yet. So we're going to start with Silva Drakes, and I'm just going to walk you through her kit. Uh, these her kits not fully maxed out, you know, I have her in relentless So I do have the resistance and HP I tried to get as much resistance on her as I could Because I started I used her in the eternal dragon now She had like 300 accuracy with the set that I had on before but uh, now I have her in more resistance against the eternal dragon so she can uh, not get uh, blocked of her skills but now I'm going to be using her. I used her in Magma, so it's fine that you have her resistance a little bit high as well in Magma so she doesn't get those burns uh, as often. Um, but yeah, so speed. You're really looking for speed, accuracy, HP if you can get it, a little bit of defense. I do have resistance for a chest plate, which is not max speed with accuracy. Um, I have defense with three rolls on defense for the ring, defense with accuracy with a max glyph there, uh, six star glyph, and then resistance and speed, two rolls on speed there, uh, which is only a le level 11 banner. So if I max this out, obviously she would be at around maybe 300, 350 resistance with the chest plate and the banner. Um, going on, and just to show you real quick her stats, 199 speed, that could get a little bit higher with some glyphs. Um, I'd love her to get to like 220 speed, that'd be nice, but she can run around 190 speed against the Magma Dragon just fine with a little bit over 3,000 defense, and you want her to be at like 38,000 or more HP if possible with roughly 220 resistance, and I would like to go for higher accuracy to land against the adds that you're going against the waves, I mean. Um, the next champion... I have uh, Ignatius, which you don't really need to use. You can just use uh, um, Seneschal. And then I have uh, Tayrell here. Um, stats, 187 speed, 3,800 defense, 35,000 HP, 260 debuff accuracy. I'd like this to be a little bit higher, um, but I do need a better banner in order to do that, six-star banner. And then, of course, I would need a better chest plate, maybe with more accuracy, stuff like that. But I also want him to do damage, so um, eventually I'll try to take this crit rate gauntlet off, but it has three rolls on speed. Um, I do have him not fully mastered, but he has the war master at the bottom. Um, yeah, so just give him about 250 to 300 accuracy, and he'll be landing those decrease attacks. Next one um, is Apothecary. So I've had this Apothecary in the same speed set with uh, Divine Speed set for a while now. He has a crit rate for the glove. Now you want him to have decent HP, over 2,000 defense, have 242 speed. The faster you get him, the faster you're going to circle back around to the boon of speed and also the healing ability that he has in Soothing Chant. Um, and I put him in a resistance banner with speed. So try to give him as much resistance as you can. Put him in an attack uh, amulet with resistance. Um, I'd rather change this out though, probably for a defense amulet or an HP amulet with resistance. High resistance would be great. And then of course HP, you could do, go with defense as well, but I typically go with HP on the ring. Um, kind of stinks with the rolls that I got, so this is kind of a crappy ring, so eventually I'll switch that out too. Next one, uh, I do have Umbral Enchantress here and uh, she's rank 5, level 50. Uh, she has a perception and again, this is all weak gear. This is not great gear, so this is free to play friendly. Level 8, level 8, level 8, level 12. She has decent speed, 
because I have her in speed boots, 164 speed. She's not fast, only 20K health points. But the reason why she survives is because she has the unkillable. 220, you need at least 220 accuracy so you're landing it on the normal Doom Tower bosses. Um, I do have her in, I think, resistance for the chest plate. And I have a accuracy right here, one roll. I wish I got two, but again, you gotta keep rolling until you get good pieces. Last one is Seneschal. I do have him in a frost set. So I've got speed wherever I can get it with defense and accuracy. A little bit of crit rate as much as I can get, a little bit of crit damage. I also put him in perception. Now this is a very weak gauntlet. I'd like it to be a, a higher level gauntlet with better crit rate. If I can get him in a 60% crit rate gauntlet, that'll be better. Or even defense with high crit rate stats. I have him in HP with defense. And then crit damage with accuracy. Um, I would probably put accuracy on the banner if I do rank him up. So there you have it. The, that was the, oh, and the speed, he's at 190 speed. So you want him to go as fast as possible. I mean, if you can get him over 200 speed, that's even better. Um, you probably want him around like 230 speed if you're going to try to put them into hard Doom Tower Magma Boss. But again, those are the champions for you. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching if you've watched this far. Please go ahead and just leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribing is really going to help me out um, in creating content like this for you guys. And if you're interested in any specific content, please feel free to leave a comment right down below. Thanks and take care guys.